Hey YouTube. Well, it's Valentine's Day, and uh, Bullseye's taking me for a walk. I wanted to tell you that on those the video series that I'm making on this spreadsheet, and uh, as I go through it, you'll realize that it's not just about the spreadsheet. That the main thing that I'm wanting you to pick up from this is that you can't forget anything when it comes time to uh, you know pricing out stuff and where this is headed is that it gets to the point where um, well, this is nothing but ice here it gets to the point where it tells you how much per board foot you need to charge in order to be able to you know run your business now there's a whole lot of ways that you can cut corners and cutting corners by <coughs> doing multiple jobs and things like that is one way the other thing that you need to understand about that spreadsheet that I have shown you is that it is for the numbers are for a company that's working every day cutting sawing every day now if you're not working every day and let's say you're working six months out of the year or let's suppose you were a school teacher and you're only working three months out of the year you still need to pay for the stuff so instead of having those you know weekly uh, um, monthly and annual numbers that I have plugged into the spreadsheet you are going to have to figure them out according to a three month period. So in other words, if you don't have eight hours a day, every day of work, you need to figure out how many hours you do have, and then you have to figure your numbers out accordingly. And like I was saying, for instance, if you do it three months out of the year, and let's say your car payment, your truck payment is, let's say $500 a month, you uh, have got to charge a whole lot more than what the number would be for an annual, you know, working every day. Because if you don't, you're not gonna earn enough money to pay the truck payment for the whole year in the three months that you work. That's something that you have to realize. So, um, and the other thing I'd like you to realize is if you're using your wife's wages to pay your bills, you're not in business, okay? It's a hobby. So it's difficult to realize that, uh, you know, you just because you have money for something, or even if you have, like let's say you have a chainsaw, you already have a chainsaw. Just because you have a chainsaw doesn't mean that you shouldn't be charging money for a new chainsaw. Because if you don't, when your chainsaw dies, you can't afford another chainsaw. I just wanted to try and clarify that a little. And uh, after Bullseye takes me for my walk, I'm going to uh, get back to that spreadsheet here in a couple minutes. Okay, so the last thing we went over on the spreadsheet was the truck, <clears throat> and now we're going to go down to the sawmill. Alright, so <clears throat> the sawmill, um, and I have $10,000 here, I should actually put eight because it was around 8000 but I'm going to just leave the 10 there. So let's say that sawmill costs you $10,000, and I think this LT15 was only eight or even 7500 on sale. But regardless, I got $10,000 there. I'm thinking that this thing is going to last me three years, okay, of hard use like this. Now, I'm not sure of that. Uh, I know some guys have had the LT15 a lot longer. It seems to me, from my opinion, that it would last longer, but we're not talking about just the LT15 here, although that's, you know, the purpose of the whole thing. But So you spend $10,000 on a sawmill, so you write sawmill in here, okay? Underneath that you need a sawyer, which is a labor column there, manpower. 
Okay, so you got 20 bucks an hour for a Sawyer. Let me just pull that back up. $20 an hour for a Sawyer. Um, it ends up over the long haul of three years to be about $1.60 an hour for the saw, 19 cents. And remember that's underneath the money. So that's actually the um, interest on the loan. And these are the hours, 40 hours a week. You got to have this kind of money for that minimum now. These are minimum numbers. We are monthly and then yearly. Okay, what you want to make to be able to pay that off in three years time. <clears throat> um, again, underneath the Sawyer because it's manpower, you got workman's comp, again, Social Security, and then fuel for the sawmill. Now, uh, DLT-15 does not use a lot of sawmill for me, or does not use a lot of fuel, I mean, for me, because I'm not using it that heavily. Okay, I do cut quite a bit, but I'm not doing it for a living. I'm doing it to uh, have the red oak. That's what I'm after. So, um, you know, if you're doing it for a living, you're going to run it pretty hard. So I'm not sure if it's going to use this much gas or not. But what, regardless, you still have to be able to pay for fuel. Uh, maintenance on it, um, I've got pretty much money here on maintenance. You know, you're talking a lot, a lot of blades here. <clears throat> if you're going to sharpen blades or have them sharpened, you know, that's what I am pretty much have added in here. Now, the $7 does not reflect just one blade sharpening. But you're sometimes looking at three blades, you know, a day maybe or better. Plus, uh, you need uh, um, motor oil, you may need a belt, you may need some parts. So I have a lot of money on here. You know, you're looking at $14,000 annually. Let me see if that's uh, right. I believe it is. Just hold on a second. I want to add that up. Uh, 14, that's an hour. Or no, 14000 annually divided by 2080 hours. Let's see here. What do I... Yeah, seven eleven, seven dollars and eleven cents <clears throat> divided by 2080. And that's hours. Or I should actually multiply that. Hold on guys, I just came in from walking the dog. I'm got to get in the right frame of mind here. Okay, so 711 times 2080, that's what it would be. Yeah, you're looking at $14,000 a year. Now, you know, like I say, I put this maintenance in here mainly for blades and stuff. And if I'm using it hot and heavy, I, I may end up spending this. I doubt that very much. You know, I'm not putting this number in here to make the wood miser look bad. I'm just covering a certain amount of things. So, in here, there may be blades. And I know there's blades. There's going to be blades. There's going to be air filter. There's going to be different things, uh, you know, for the mill that you'll need to keep it running. And don't forget, this is running this mill eight hours a day. Every day. So... Anyway, you make sure you put all that stuff down in there, you multiply it out, and come up with your numbers over here. Alright, so then after the sawmill, the next thing you would have here is a helper. <clears throat> now, if you're running your sawmill by yourself, you know, pretty much like at the moment is what I'm doing, um, you don't have to have the helper in here, but having the helper in here is going to make it so that later on, when you are needing help that you can afford to help because you already have them figured out. Now I did not put a helper in here. You know you can put a helper in here or whatever you want to. I don't think you should get twenty dollars an hour but you get the idea. You would put his wages, the workman's comp, social security roughly, fill them out in here for the annual uh, month and weekly sums so that you know how much you would charge if you needed a helper. Now for me, because the sawmill has a sawyer, and down here where I have the planer, I have an operator, and I also have an operator on the tractor, that's going to um, more than suffice me not having an, a helper here. Because let's face it, the guy who's running the tractor is not going to be always busy with a small sawmill like this. So he can be the one to offload the wood and stack the lumber and stuff like that. So he's, he's counted for 
I just want you to see where he's counted for. All right, so then we have the kiln. All right, so now the kiln um, comes under, and I'm putting this under machinery because it's an operating thing, okay? So the kiln, where do I have the kiln? Yeah, the kiln, you're looking at about $1.44 or $1 an hour. And what it is, is I started off with $3,000 here because that, uh, if I would have built that kiln from scratch without using any lumber from my sawmill, it would have cost me about $3,000 for it. Okay? So you're looking at $3,000. I divided that up by the hours. I lost a couple bucks here, but it's not a big deal. Um, $249 a month, $57 a week, $1.44 per hour to include the kiln. And then maintenance on the kiln, I have two cents an hour here. Uh, I'm looking at $60 a year. I don't really see anything with the kiln uh, <coughs> because, of, you know, it's actually a building. It's built to last quite a while. The point is, is, you know, you might have to, you know, might want to buy some paint to repaint it. You might break something with the, maybe a piece of uh, lumber would do something or nick something or whatever. So it's not really important that you spend a lot on that. And, you know, house maintenance, uh, when you build a new house, there's a lot, there's not a lot of maintenance on it. Although, you know, people who take care of things like your deck and stuff like that, you have to take care of. And basically, I'm looking at the kiln as it's self-sufficient. It sheds water. Um, it may need to be painted now and then, but it's not going to be a, you know, a made, major thing. I might need a fan or two, and those fans are like 15 bucks if that. Um, ten dollars um, or ten cents here an hour for electricity. I haven't even bothered to look that up because I noticed my light bill hardly shows anything with the three fans running. But nonetheless, it's like two hundred and eight dollars a year, so it is included. So you know, even the kiln. All right. And now I don't have it down here, but I'm going to tell you, you can go a lot further than this yet. You can actually take. Like, let's say you have a mortgage on your property and you have an acre of ground. You can actually divide that up by the foot, your mortgage, figure out how many feet your um, sawmill operation takes up, and you can actually put a number in there for the land that you're using for the sawmill. Now, I haven't done that yet, but you can do that, and I recommend you do that. Because if you have your land down here, and you're ch uh, charging for the space that you're using as if you were renting, that means when the time comes, when you save all that money up, the time comes that you need a bigger space, you have some money to go t towards another piece of property possibly. Okay? So keep that in mind and think about that. All right, so the next thing we have is the planer. I'm, I'm, I basically have, in these work packages over here, I basically have what you need to get a board out. You know, we want a finished board to sell. That's the name of our game. So the operator, here you go with the $20. I'm just, you know, I'm just putting that down on here. I don't think I would pay somebody $20 an hour to run the planer. I mean, he, all they're doing is moving a board back and forth, back and forth. But nonetheless, you know, if you have somebody who's really good and they're conscientious and they're watching the machine, cleaning it, and doing all those things, they're worth this kind of money to you. So I'm just putting that in there, you know, for now. Um, liability, Social Security, you've seen that before. Um, fuel or electricity. So, in other words, if it's a gas-powered planer or whatever, or if you're using a generator to run the planer because you're out in the boonies somewhere, whatever, you know, I'm putting something down for this. 30 cents an hour for electricity. Again, I haven't sat down and figured out, and you can figure out what electricity costs. All you got to do is look at your light bill uh, for the month, look at the kilowatt hours, divide that out, look at the um, electricity that the machine uh, uses, and you can get pretty darn close to how much it costs to run it. Uh, the maintenance on the planer, you're looking at, you may need blades, you know, you're going to have to sharpen blades. Um, whatever, uh, there's a lot of lots there, $2,000 for maintenance on that planer. Now, you know, just remember, I have the one planer, and I, I'm up here at uh, about two grand for a planer. I have one planer that I bought that was fairly cheap, just to, you know, rough off the flat boards, and then I have the one that's the molding head cutter, so that's why I have $2,000 there. If you buy a smaller planer, 
or you know whatever if you can buy an, a used old uh, industrial one you look around you can find stuff like that for a good price charge the price of a new one so that you have money for it when the time comes and you know work these numbers up so we have fuel or electricity maintenance we're putting a little maintenance item on there like I said you know blades and stuff depreciation 20 cents an hour for depreciation um, this means that I'm hopeful that this thing isn't going to fall apart like a, saw, a chainsaw would. So we're looking at about $400 a year that I'm charging for the loss of what I put my money into. Okay, I don't know if you're understanding depreciation. Depreciation is a loss of um, value for what you have, but I'm charging for that loss because if I don't charge for the loss and I pay for the the, the uh, brand new planer, I need the money back from a bland, brand new planer and I want that depreciation money to come back to me. Now that's how I do it and I can explain more to you about that as we go on. Okay, so then the last thing here on the list is a tractor for moving lumber. Now if you have a, saw, a, saw, a, a, a logger working and he has, you know, one um, machine uh, dragging logs around for him you obviously can't use that if he's working eight hours a day to work over at your mill so you need to have some other machine over there to work with now again you know you can you don't have to jump into this whole thing like I'm planning it here I'm just trying to show you the the bigger picture of it and I will go over how it can look and how you can cut corners for a small guy all right, so a tractor for moving lumber, I put another $10,000 there, which, like I say, I know you can buy some used stuff for that. we got an operator for the tractor, again, the workman's comp and social security. Fuel for that tractor, this is basically a copy of the tractor above. Maintenance and depreciation, okay? So, this is where this comes. Now, here's some surprising stuff. When you look at this, you're looking at, Per, per hour, okay, or let's see, what is this? Weekly. This is a weekly basis. On a weekly basis, you're looking at $7,800 a week that it costs you to run this operation. Okay, $34,000 a month to run this operation, and uh, $409,360.20 $409, at this point to have this operation running for the eight hour day every day. Now here's the the neat part about this spreadsheet and this is what I want to be able to show you here and I'll elaborate on this a little longer in another video but if you if you look at this down here the Woodmiser LT15 I believe has a 320 board foot an hour uh, is what they claim it can cut now I believe that the wood miser can cut a lot more than that. The reason I'm saying that is because if you cut two bytes, you're cutting twice as much board feet. Uh, this may be based on cutting one by one by whatever the width is. However, 320 board feet, I'm using that as a somewhere to start. Okay, uh, if you figure one log is roughly 150 board feet, if it's a say a 20 inch log, 126 board feet. So think about that. You're talking three logs to cut up three logs. Well, I know when my grandson's here because let's face it, I'm a I'm an old workhorse. When my grandson is here, he can definitely cut three logs in less than a half a day. So you're looking at doubling this in a day. But for now, we're going to use their numbers. They're conservative, and I think they're good numbers. So you're looking at um, 320 board feet. So what did I do with that? I took the, uh, or let me start at the top here again. I got $196 per hour to run this business. Okay, that includes everything that's above. $196 an hour. There it is. Then I took that uh, money and I added 25% profit to it. Okay, so I have 25% added to that. So here's here's my view of this. If I'm going to spend $196 a day, I want 25% interest on my money. 
Now you may say, oh boy, 25% is a lot, where are you going to get that? Believe me, it's not a lot when you've got to consider all of the things that can go wrong in a business. But 25% is what I'm doing. In fact, when I was a kid, my grandfather used to say to me, if you can't make 100% on your money, you shouldn't be doing it. That was back 40 years ago, 50 years ago when I was a young man, or not even a man yet. My grandfather would sit down and talk to me about this stuff, and they were making that kind of money. And you'd be surprised, a lot of these box stores make that kind of money. Walmart and them, their prices may seem low to you, but and they claim that they're making $2 on a $100 item, and that's a lot of baloney, just like car manufacturers. You know, they sell cars to these guys, and they're saying that they only make $100 on a car. Do the math. If a car salesman sells 100 cars, a month and you got uh, 20 people working for them, it doesn't add up. So, you know, don't believe that stuff. All right, so anyway, you got $196 an hour is what it cost to run this operation. I added 25% to that, which is $40.20 an hour. That's profit at this point, and it's more or less a net profit. It's not a, well, it's a gross profit. It's not a net take home profit. And I'll explain why later. But so it brings me up to $246 uh, an hour, and if you take that $246 and divide that by 320 board feet an hour, you end up with $0.77 cents a board foot. So what is that telling me? That's telling me that I have to charge for uh, timbered, milled, uh, kiln, dried, and planed, lumber, I have to charge 77 cents a board foot in order to make ends meet, okay, and still get this little bit of profit here. Now, let me just show you what's wrong with that. Now, here's a calculator. Let me get my calculator back up. Okay, here's my calculator. All right, so here's what I'm looking at here. 70 cents a board foot, 0.77. Now, a 2 by 4 has 5.3 board feet. Okay, you're looking at $4.08 for a 2x4. I'm telling you right now, I'm not paying $4 for no 2x4. I don't care who cuts it and how straight it is or anything. Because I can go down to Lowe's and pick out all the 2x4s I want all day long for right now $3.19. So this means that you're losing money if you charge three dollars and nineteen cents for the same two by four okay because it costs you seventy seven cents to cut a two by four now on the opposite end of that if you look at their red oak they get eight dollars a board foot for red oak you're charging seventy seven cents a board foot for red oak you can make a killing there's no doubt about that because, you know, you're charging 77 cents to cover all your expenses, yet you can sell it for $8. Now, if you figure this out and you, you, and you can sell as much red oak as you can get your hands on, or hardwood, it doesn't have to be red oak, it can be whatever, it may offset the, co the cost of the, uh, um, the framing lumber, like 2x4s and stuff. Not only that, but 2x4s are going to cut a lot faster than this. Um, pine lumber just cuts faster. You can get it down to the cant. You can get it cut up into pieces. You don't have to be playing too many games with it unless there's you know something wrong with the log. So, do you understand what I'm saying here? In other words, we have all the numbers plugged in. Some of the numbers are low, like $10,000 for tractors. Um, you know... Uh, where are we at here? Forty thousand dollars for a truck. This is not a truck. This is not a brand new logging truck here. So even though we have these low numbers in here, when you add everything up and bring it down here, you're still looking at this number, which is higher than what framing lumber would cost. So now you have to go back and start looking at what you can do to to change this. Alright, so I'm going to end this video with this and give you something to think about there. So you need to consider that. This, these numbers are what these, all of this spreadsheet brought me to. This one number here is more important to me than every other number on the spreadsheet. Because this one tells me how much I need to charge per board foot. 
according to this operation. Okay guys, I'm going to put this one up for you. It'll be part two. Um, have a good one. Thanks for putting up with me again today. And uh, my teacher's pet is sitting there listening to the whole lecture. So if you have any questions, you can refer them to Bullseye if you want. Okay guys, have a good one. Bye.